What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Modi J and we are locked in. This is the day seven recap of Amazon Prime show Cross. And episode seven is titled Happy Birthday. Now, happy birthday could be something good, meaning we're going to get a gift or a surprise, or it could be something negative and it could be your last birthday. Also, we know that Cross, he's temporarily suspended, so he's going to have to try to figure things out from the civilian aspect. But before we jump into this and break down episode seven, if you like this kind of content, murder, mystery, crime, um, thriller, drama, all of the above, then Cross is probably the show for you. Hit that subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Make sure you hit that like button and we're on that road to 75,000 subscribers. Now Cross, it's up to him to figure this out because no one on the force, Metro PD, is working like he is. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Episode seven recap of Cross. Starting the episode off, we see Ed down in the basement of this other building where he relocated Shannon. And on the TV, we hear a guy talking about the state of Florida and lethal injection. Now, there's three different vials that will go into the body. One to numb the body, the second one to remove the pain, and then the third is going to actually stop the heart. So what he's doing is actually replicating the exact same thing that Eileen went through, but he's doing it to Shannon. At the cross house, we see young Damon in the kitchen. Grandma's making the food, but you know, she be giving us some. Some healthy snacks. We don't want that in the morning. We want sugar. We need our sugar. But she looks at his shoes and she tells him, you need to throw those shoes away. Alex comes in and says, yeah, she did the same thing to me when I was younger with my J's. But I got mine out the trash can. The only thing is I couldn't sit down for a whole week. Basically saying I was supposed to throw away my busted up J's, but I got them out the trash. And Nana Mama whooped me. Can't whoop kids anymore. Now, Nana talked to the AG. Now, when the AG came over, she gave her some information about who Deidre's accomplice might be or someone that was very close to her. Now, we hear Nana Mama say, you need to go find a guy by the name of Peter. And she's saying you and Samson. Now, she doesn't know about the blow up between Samson and Alex that they had in the locker room. She's just like, listen, this is a, a suspect right here that you probably need to go ask a couple of questions to. John goes over to talk to Lieutenant, but we just found out Lieutenant is actually working with Ed. She's the one that shot Mike Grisham inside the, the safe house. Now, that's because he was a witness. So what she's doing is trying to downplay it, and she's trying to see how much information John has because she knows how him and Alex work. They figure out a lot. So what she does, make him feel comfortable. Hey, what I want you to do is be the godfather to my baby because he needs a male figure in his life. So John... He's like, okay, I can do that. But she also says, anything you find out, let me know immediately. Now, Cross, where does he go? He goes to meet up with Senator Caitlin because he thought, I see a ghost. You've seen a ghost. So he remembered Senator Caitlin and he goes and meets up with her. Now, her security detail, they're very weak. They didn't have the doors locked. So Cross jumps in here and he's like, what does Ed Ramsey have on you? So she tells all of her security to leave. And she's like, listen. What he has on me, I can't really go into too, too much detail about it. But Cross is like, I'm not trying to hear that BS. You need to tell me what you know. And I believe that you've seen Shannon at the house. She's like, well, I did see something and I thought he wasn't going to take it that far, but he did. So Caitlin, she's getting exposed and she's willing to give up a little bit of information, however much to save her life. Ed is really taking this serious, replicating these serial killers and how they were unalived in their last meal. So what he tells Shannon is, I'm going to give you your last meal, whether you want it or not. Now, I can either use a tube and give it to you, or you can actually eat it and drink your coffee. But I'll also give you a phone call, one last phone call to your parents to tell them that you are good and you're not missing before he unalives her. Now, Shannon, she's not saying anything, and we know the extreme measure that she went through to try to get herself out of this. By stabbing herself on the face, running away, attacking him, she says, let me just have my phone call. Samson calls a meeting between two detectives and the FBI agent, and then they also call Alex. Now, he's been doing his own research and investigation since Alex is temporarily suspended with no badge, no gun. He really can't be involved in it. But when they get here, of course, the number one priority is finding Ed so they can get Shannon. But then Cross says, I have very good knowledge that Shannon cut herself and it's an actual minor setback, meaning they need a doctor. And we know that there was a doctor, a doctor to fix her face. 
Now, after all of this, of course, these two are at odds. Samson sends the ladies out to start doing a little bit of digging on their own. And then him and Cross, they come eye to eye for the first time since the blow up in the locker room. And he's saying maybe Chief has something to do with it because she was over there at Ed's house. But Cross says, nah, you remember what coach told us? Sometimes the hits that you take are the ones you don't see. So that eliminates Chief. But guess what? We were just at Lieutenant's house earlier today. Cross is at the house and he's thinking. He's doing his thing. You know, when his mind gets to wondering, we start hearing all kinds of different voices, thinking back on different things. Now, Nana Mama is at the house and she's singing, having a good old time, knowing Alex is over here trying to piece this together, even though he's suspended. But something sticks out to him and it's a mere good speed. His date of death, January 28, 2024. These deaths are close to birthdays. The title of this episode is called Happy birthday. Does that link Shannon's birthday to maybe the day that she's going to be unalive? Shannon's going through it. Remember, she's been relocated and behind her is huge murals of all of the serial killers that have been unalive by Ed. And she's sitting down here. She can just hear the wind through the window. She sees a little bird's nest and she's singing a beautiful song. I believe I was a bird. I will fly away. And she's just crying because it looks like this is the end. So they piece it together. It isn't Shannon's birthday. Wait a minute. Okay, birthdays. Uh-oh. It's Eileen's birthday, February 29th, 2024, which is a leap year. And that's where Cross says, yeah, because we only have four years for this. And he's taking more risk than he typically would because he doesn't want to wait another four years to be able to do this on the exact birthday. It's getting crazier and crazier, but that's why you need a team of individuals to come together because four brains are better than one. Samson goes over to Lieutenant's house and he calls her out. She's like, hey, Samson, what you got? He's like, oh, nothing. Let me talk to you. Why are you working with Ed? And she's caught off guard. So caught off guard, she had to grab some tea. And now she's sitting here trying to come up with these excuses. Well, he just... He just uses you and you, you really don't realize it. And I was trying to have a baby, me and my wife, and he played us. But we paid enough, Samson. is just like, you didn't pay at all. Amir paid. Shannon paid. All of these victims paid. Me and Alex, we paid. We've been on this case. Alex is getting suspended because of you. Now, she's been working and she just called a body. So she's like, I'll, I'll turn myself in. John said, no, I'll take you to turn yourself in because this is unacceptable. He drags her down to the precinct, the walk of shame in front of all of their colleagues, all of these subordinates up under her, because the only person above her is obviously the chief. And then you have like internal affairs and everything of that nature. But she sit here and everyone's just looking at her like, damn, this whole time we've been reporting to you, doing everything you ask, and you've been playing with the other team. Cross, where does he go? To the best plastic surgeon in D.C. Someone that might have a close connection with Ed Ramsey. So when he gets there, she's sitting there. What, what's going on? He said, how long you been working with Ed? She's, what do, you, what do you mean? You know how it is. I don't know what you're talking about. This is absurd. What are you doing, Cross? He's like, nah, 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 none of that. Where's Shannon? You worked on her. She's like, oh, I didn't want to, but I had to. He, he just has so much control over us. Everyone's using the same excuse when it comes to Ed, but we know that Ed has a lot of power. So we got LT out of here, and we're about to get the plastic surgeon out of here the only problem is cross he took her kindness and he thought that he had this all in the wraps and she was actually going to turn herself in like lt did but instead she gives him a jab and that jab paralyzed him dropped him down to the ground she yanks herself away she's looking at him like <laughs> you think i was really going to turn ed in for you now she doesn't unalive him she just temporarily paralyzes him and he tries to grab. And like I said, she yanks away. Well, Ed, he's going on about his presentation. He has his people here. He put the mask on. He pressed button number one. And all we hear Shannon says, I hate you. Now, remember, the doctor, she's headed over here also to watch. We got one of his advisors in here. And everyone's just watching Ed, the quote unquote artist, unalive someone else to go along with his other 10 bodies. 
Now, it turns out Shannon wakes back up. And the reason for this, she's wondering what happened. But the reason for it is because Eileen's first lethal injection was botched by the state of Florida. So he's doing everything to the T. He messed it up on purpose just so he could put the mask on and go ahead and do it again so everyone can actually witness it. Samson went over there to meet up with Cross at the doctor's office after he just turned in LT. And Cross is finally getting up and coming too. Now, remember I told you the doctor grabbed away from him. That's because he put his cell phone in her bag and now they're actually tracing it. They got to the warehouse. When they get to this warehouse, we hear Ed in here doing a speech. I create art. Death can be something wonderful. It can be beautiful. I did it. But they come in here, guns drawn, and when they kick in, freeze. Everybody's on the run now. People are getting arrested left and right. But now we're in hot pursuit. The doctor gets arrested. The advisor gets arrested. They're chasing after Ed. But Ed had a car sitting in the back waiting for a sweet escape. He ends up driving through the damn garage door. Arr, boom. They chase after him. They're like, damn. When in reality, all they had to do is just, hey, Samson, bring the vehicle around. Or, hey, we need a, you know what I'm saying? We need a bird in the air right now. We need you to track down this vehicle in this area. But Cross, he isn't on the force right now, so he can't call that in. Now, Cross ain't no fool. He knows that Ed was trying to take care of all of this today. So there's only one place he could go back to, and that's back to his office. Now, any other criminal, they probably would just hit the road and try to get low. But Alex knows him better than he knows himself, and he mentioned that at the birthday party. So we see him with a syringe, and he ends up stabbing himself in the neck to pass out. Now, Alex is trying to recover him because he's thinking maybe he killed himself. But John says, we got to go, man. He's done. Now, the time for the recital is about to happen. Nana Mama actually has L come over and says, can you do me a favor? We like each other. I enjoy you and the kids would like to see a familiar face also. Would you be able to take these kids to this rehearsal before he actually has his young Mozart? And L is saying, yeah, because she definitely likes Alex. And she enjoys the family. So she's trying to earn her way in, basically earn her keep and show that, okay, I can do this. So Nana Mama, she entrusts this L and L is like, okay, I got you. You remember that name, Peter, that Nana Mama received from the attorney general that she told Alex about? Well, we follow up on Peter. and When we get to his house, it's a shrine about Alex Cross. We also see that he has news articles and news clippings of Deidre Nolan sentenced to life in prison. And on the wall, it says, kill Alex Cross. You must pay for what you've done. So Alex is thinking, what the hell have I just stumbled on? This guy says, I hate effing Alex Cross. This is some weird stuff. This is weird. Nana Mama's friend, the lady from the young Mozart, she's up here. and She's like, man, this next kid coming up for the rehearsals. Damon, I've got real close with his family. They're very loving. They're very caring. And this young boy has a lot of talent. So it takes a village to raise a young man. And we got young Damon coming up here. L's out there with Jeannie. And life is good. Other than Alex Cross finding out that somebody by the name of Peter is after him. Now, during this rehearsal, we see Peter actually show up. Peter shows up and he's looking at L. He's looking at Jeannie. He knows who Damon is. He has a picture of Alex and his whole family. Now we're just wondering what's the next thing he's going to do. Because we hear Alex telling Kayla that it might be survival's remorse. Now you remember that syringe that Ed used where we thought he was dead? Well, it was the same thing that he did when it came to Shannon. And she woke back up later. So it stopped his heart, but not long enough for him to be actually dead. So he wakes up in the coroner's office. Chokes out the doctor that's in there, puts on a uniform, and he's going to Shannon's hospital room because they shaved Shannon, but they didn't save her all the way because he is still alive. The only thing is when he gets in that room, Alex is smarter than we thought. He's waiting. Ed closes the curtain to talk to Shannon to finish off the job, and Alex shows up with the toolie to the back of his head. Don't even think about it. Now, Ed is over here. He's trying to cop a plea, but Alex ain't playing around this time. You're under arrest for sure. And the last thing we see 
the gentleman, Peter, he shows up at Alex Cross's house and Nana Mama's in there by herself. And well, she tries to fight off. And as the screen goes black, all you hear is, ooh, ah, ooh, dang, wow, ooh, sheesh. All right, there you go. Episode 7 recap. We have one episode left. Let me know what you think about this Peter character. And was that a good move by Ed to take the same thing that he did to Shannon and apply it to himself to try to get out that gym? Of course, it didn't work, but it was a great idea and concept. It's just Alex Cross is a little bit smarter than we were really initially led on to in episode one. Let me know what you think about this. We have one episode left. I'll see you tomorrow. My name is Mo IJ. If you like this kind of content, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on a beat, boy.